Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 15 Pro has been out for a couple months at this point and I wanted to go over the two month later review but also the good and bad. Every time I pick this up I'm pretty much amazed at how thin and light it is because I'm used to using a Pro Max phone and I think I'll probably switch this year. I've said this before but I think I'm going to switch for a while to the smaller phone because I just love the size overall. I've used a Pro Max phone for a long time and this just seems to be super convenient and we'll talk about the good in just a moment. Now the first thing is the design. It's not too much different than previous years of course, but they did change it to titanium, which is really nice in aiding that it's much lighter than it was before and feels a little bit different. It has a different finish to it. It's a matte finish, which is great. And if you have the natural titanium one, obviously it doesn't show as many fingerprints. It still does, but it's not as bad. And it also doesn't have the issue where sometimes it could chip if it's got one of the different finishes. My blue titanium version actually has a chip in it from where it was dropped on tile. So that's something you won't have to worry about with the natural titanium. The overall weight is really nice compared to the previous one where it's just a little bit lighter than before and it feels very thin as well with these nice curved edges around the outside edge. It's something that you definitely notice the second you pick one up if you've ever used maybe a 14 Pro all the way back to the 12s. Now as far as the one hand usability that's where this makes it really convenient to use and why I want to switch to this because I can just use it with one hand. I don't have to use two hands to sort of scoot it up and down in my hand. I can use the whole thing at once and of course it depends on your overall hand size but it makes it really convenient when you're going through different apps, swiping through, going home, going back and forth. It's just really nice when you're using it. I don't have to use reachability or anything like that. And of course we don't have a downgrade of the display at all this year so that's another great thing. We have a very bright 2000 nit display and this one's almost all the way up as we're recording outside but it's super bright outdoors while you're playing video or anything else. It just looks great. It has great viewing angles. There's no issues in the sun. Unless it's incredibly bright out that day it's still one of the best displays out there that way. And also of course it has pro motion which makes it super smooth so as you go through and just scroll through things everything's just really nice and smooth. So you've had that for a couple of years now and of course this phone has it as well. So you're not really compromising on the display other than its size going from the Pro Max to the regular Pro. Additionally, of course, this has PWM. I've talked about in the past where it controls brightness this way and you really can't see it or anything if this bothers you. Typically, these newer phones, including the 14 Pro and Pro Max, shouldn't bother your eyes at all. While the display is flickering to control brightness, it's at such a high rate that it really shouldn't bother your eyes and cause eye strain and things like that. So most people shouldn't be bothered by this. I've heard from very few that it's actually an issue for. And also if you're using something like YouTube, if we rotate it here, you'll see it does cut into the display a little bit, which is one of the downsides of the Dynamic Island, but it looks great overall and the speakers are nice and loud and have just a really great stereo sound this year. I know some people have had issues with the top speaker crackling. I haven't experienced that whatsoever, but some people say at the highest volumes it does that. So if I hit play here and turn it up, let's jump forward and into my comparison, you'll hear the song here or hear the music. And while they're small speakers, they still sound pretty good. Even at the highest volumes, they don't seem to crackle as much as maybe the 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max did. So they just seem to be a little bit better as far as that goes. Now when it comes to the overall speed, this year we have the A17 Pro processor and we have 8 gigabytes of RAM. You'll see right here that we have just about 8 gigabytes of RAM total and that means we can keep more apps open. So if we go back into maybe weather, things aren't going to reload as much. You can go way back to where maybe you've got a game running, go back into it, and it won't typically reload unless you've got maybe 20 or 30 apps open, then it will. So typically you really won't have many issues with that whatsoever. And just going through things, you're not going to notice a speed difference between the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max typically. And let's go into this as I haven't opened it in a while, but you're not going to notice much of a difference as far as going through different applications. Where you will notice a difference is you have the option to play new AAA games. So if you wanted to play something like Resident Evil 
Village or Resident Evil 4, you'll be able to do that and there will be future games where you'll be able to play things like that that other phones just can't do because the processor either doesn't have enough RAM or enough processing power with the GPU in order to handle that. So it's pretty great that way. Another area that's really nice is the camera. In fact, I'm recording with a 15 Pro camera or 15 Pro Max. So if I spin this around, you'll see there's the camera there. Pretty simple, just recording with that. It does a great job, and whether it's photos or video, you can see overall that it's really crisp and clear. And of course, this year, if you're into video, we have ProRes RAW. So we have ProRes SDR, you can switch it to HDR or whatever you'd like, turn it off. And we have the option to record to an external SSD as well, since we have USB-C. This makes it super convenient, and I've recorded some videos on this channel using it, and no one noticed at all compared to my more expensive cameras from Sony or Canon or any of those. So I think this is really impressive this year, and if you've been wanting to get into YouTube, you definitely could do it with this. And you don't have to use even ProRes at all. You can just use the regular camera, and it does a great job in general. In fact, I'm not using ProRes to record this video, and most things are just left on auto so you can sort of have it manage everything itself. It does a great job and I'm really impressed with the camera this year. And if you wanted to use the forward facing camera, you could use this just handheld like I am now. It is a little bit shaky, but in general, it does a great job. It's a 12 megapixel camera and records 4K 60 HDR if you want to. I think it does a good job overall. And if you wanted to use this for regular vlogging or something else, of course, you could just use this camera. One other thing I forgot to mention that's sort of a positive is the actual action button. I don't find that I use it a whole lot, but it's nice that it's there and not just a switch to silence the phone. Maybe they'll add more functionality to it in the future, but I think it does a pretty good job of just adding a little extra feature that's something we've had forever that's familiar, but also does more than just silence the phone. And with the 15 Pro, you've got great sensors, just like we had last year, 48 megapixels. You've got an ultra wide and a telephoto. But the first negative thing or bad thing with the 15 Pro is we don't have the five times zoom lens that we do with the 15 Pro Max. That could be due to maybe size, maybe battery. Maybe they just wanted to charge more for the 15 Pro Max. Either way, it doesn't have the telephoto zoom lens. And that may be a concern for some people. For me, I don't take a lot of telephoto images or video, but for some people that may be an issue. So that may be the first negative thing. The other negative thing with the display is that it actually seems to scratch pretty easy. There's a scratch right here, and I did a video when I reviewed this where I placed it on rocks, but I had a screen protector on it, and I actually swapped it and then just replaced it. I took it off for this video so I could actually show you those scratches. So the screen protector has been protecting this, but I have a scratch on here. I don't know where it came from, and I've noticed that on my 15 Pro Max as well. It seems to scratch much easier despite it supposedly being the exact same glass. So maybe it's more drop resistant, but it does seem to scratch a little easier. So I would recommend a screen protector either way. As I mentioned before, the finish can chip off of it, so that's one of the negative things. And this year, some people may complain about the color overall. They are a bit dull as far as the choices. You may or may not like them, but most people are going to put a case on it. But the natural titanium seems to really show the least amount of fingerprints. And of course, it is a little bit dull, but we have the blue, black, and white colors as well. I think they all look pretty good, but again, they're not as vibrant as maybe some people had hoped this year. Also, another negative thing is the battery. The battery in the 15 Pro is not as good as the 15 Pro. Pro Max just due to overall size of the phone being able to handle one. So we have the exact same battery life according to Apple as we do with the 14 Pro, which means you'll typically get through about maybe six hours of screen on time depending on how you use your phone. Battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% and I have not used this phone a ton. You can see it's been turned on, but I do plan to switch to it here very soon. And I did have someone send over their battery life and you can see with some charging, they had eight hours and 28 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 12 minutes of screen idle time. I had them take a look at one of the days and they had six hours and 23 minutes using about 75% of their battery. So it will get a lot of people through the day but it may not be for those power users out there that play a lot of games. If you're on FaceTime or maybe Zoom calls all day, you will need to plug it in. So keep that in mind. And we don't have fast charging any faster than we've had in previous generations. So that could be a negative for some, but you still do get 50% in about 30 minutes. Now that's with USB-C. They haven't taken advantage of faster charging speeds or more power, but maybe we'll see that in the future. Also a negative, which this one's not really too much of a big deal, is it's a little bit slippery depending on 
what time of year it is, if it's cold out, or maybe in the summer, sometimes this can feel a bit slippery even compared to the 14 Pro, and that's due to the corners that are a little bit more rounded, where before where they were squared off, it was easier to hang on to. That's really, again, not an issue if you're using a case with it. Another negative thing is probably the price. Apple is not going to reduce their price, but still it's an expensive phone. Over $1,000 typically after tax or anything else where you live, and with trade-ins, you may get a better deal, but in general, it's a pretty expensive phone. And if you have a 14 Pro, well, that may be a bit of a jump to switch it for a 15 Pro just after you've spent $1,000 a year ago or so. And then one of the final negative things is just the availability. It's been a bit tough in some countries to get your hands on one. There's a lot going on around the world, of course, and that can affect some of the supply chain, but some people have just had issues getting their hands on these. But for the most part, they're readily available in my local Apple store. So I'm not seeing that issue, but some people have complained to me that they're hard to get their hands on. With iOS 17, we were off to a pretty rough start with iPhone 15. I'm not sure what it is this year, but we had all sorts of issues. iOS 17 was super buggy to start with, and then iPhone 15s in particular had issues with them overheating, overheating while charging in BMWs. They've fixed those issues. We've had signal drops. We still have Wi-Fi issues at the time of filming this video, and with iOS 17.2, most of those issues should be fixed. However, it's still just a bit odd that there's so many little issues here and there. With iOS 18, maybe Apple's focused on that to update different interfaces, such as what we have with the action button. And there's really just some odd experiences this year. I think things are much better now, but for whatever reason, it took a really long time. And so with the iPhone 15 Pro, it's definitely something I could recommend at this point, but there are some bugs to work through. Most of them have been worked through already, but you may want to wait a little bit or wait until you can get a bit of a discount before you pick one up. Overall, it's a good phone though, and let me know what you think about it and what your experience has been if you picked one up in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.